With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Welcome folks here to the Midland Community Stadium for the 51st annual city championship game. It's the Midland Comics against the Dow High Chargers. I'm Dave Marsh along with my broadcast partner Chris Stevens bringing you the action tonight. And Chris, you've been around town a long time as I have. This is just a special night. It's, it's electric week actually. Spirit week at both schools. All building to this game tonight. We may not have eight or 9,000 people in the stands, but you still feel that electricity at this game. Yeah, always a great night. Both teams coming in with successful seasons. Midland 5-0 and on the year. Uh, Dow 4-1 and coming in. And, um, you know, looking back at the history of the rivalry, over the 55 games, Midland has won 39 of those, so historically has a big edge. But of late, um, Dow High has got an edge. They've won five of the last eight games. If you're a Kimmick fan, you take a comprehensive look at the series. You say, hey, we've dominated 30, 39 wins. They've only got 15. But in recent years, since 2010, Midland holds a seven to six yeah. advantage. But in recent years, Dow's rattled off four wins in a row, including last year when uh, everyone thought Middle was going to beat them because Middle was number one team in the state. And Dow ended up winning 42 to seven. So in this game, anything can happen. Yeah, anything goes. And uh, an interesting uh, contrast tonight, Coach Eric Metner for the Chemics has been at the helm for a long time, 102 career wins, been a part of many of these contests. Meanwhile, Matt Peterson, first year as the Dow High head coach, 30 years old, his first Midland Dow yeah. game. Yeah, interesting contrast for sure. The thing is, is Matt was an assistant under Jason Watkins at Dow, so we've seen this rivalry up close with a couple years as assistant. Now he's the head coach, different animal. Everyone's looking to you. You make all the decisions. The alumni want you. The students want you. Everyone wants you this week, so your time is, is spoken for. So. Tonight we'll see. I mean, he's 30 years old, but I got a lot of respect for Matt Peterson. He's oh, yeah. a good guy and a good coach and a good leader. Absolutely. So we are looking forward to bringing you the action tonight. Looking forward to another amazing night here. Midland High versus Dow High. We're, we're excited to bring you the action. Welcome, folks, to today's city championship game here at Midland Community Stadium. The Midland Chemics home team tonight taking on the Dow High Chargers. I'm Dave Marsh bringing you the action along with Chris Stevens. A great job by uh, the Midland and Dow uh, musical groups to sing our national anthem. Uh, awesome job as always. So, Chris, uh, we're about ready for kickoff here, and it's just always just a special night here in Midland. A little different tonight in 2020 as everything is. Yeah, with, for sure. You know, we just, you know, maybe about a thousand fans here as opposed to the eight or nine thousand that right. we're used to. But like nevertheless, when the two teams, uh, when that ball kicks off, it's it's just a special night as always. Why? Well, I think the enthusiasm will still be off the charts. I mean, we not have nine thousand people here like we normally do, but. Dow has its student section. Midland has its student section. Parents are here and uh, other fans as well. So there's going to be electricity in, this, in the stadium tonight, Dave. Absolutely. And so Dow High had won the, the toss, elected to defer, so Midland will receive on the outset here of the game. Featherington, the place kicker for Dow, will tee it up to 
This is the 55th meeting between these two schools. The 51st city championship game dating back to 1970. And like we mentioned on pregame, Midland holds a 39-15 overall edge, 36-14 in city title games. But you know, the last uh, eight contests, Dow's won five of them. And uh, as always, anything goes here tonight when these two teams meet up. So we are underway. Etherington's kick field at the 10 yard line, room to run. It's Eli Gordon all the way out to the 37 yard line. And uh, he did the Mount Pleasant game with Midland and uh, he had a big kickoff return to start that game and Eli Gordon makes his immediate impact. He's one of the core group of players for the Kimmicks who are just playmakers. He and Money and Smith uh, are, and Johnson are just the guys who can make it happen. Anytime they touch the ball, they're dangerous. And I'll tell you what, you give Gordon a step, you're probably not going to catch him. He, he is fast. Right. You mentioned Al Money, the Midland quarterback. He's a senior. Um, and uh, senior at the helm having an unbelievable senior year. Got a full house backfield here to start the game. Money's going to keep it. Follows a block. Races outside for about a four-yard game. Uh, Money is a tremendous passer, completing over 61% of his passes, 13 touchdowns, just two interceptions for 707 yards. He's also a threat running, as, as you just saw. We'll probably see him go the pigskin quite a bit well, tonight. I'll tell you, Dave, you talk about a balanced offense. You talk about middle and high. On the season, 996 yards rushing, 886 yards passing. They're number one in their division. And they're averaging 46 points a game. Wow. Second and five. Gordon's going to take the handoff on the sweep. Plows ahead. Drives ahead for the first down into Dow High territory. Great blocking. He followed uh, the running back, Drew Johnson, um, and along with, with Smith, Ty Smith, out there on the edge to pick up the first down. Well, early indications are. Midland's trying to establish the running game, and they're saying, can you stop us? I mean, two, two nice runs so far, and uh, traditionally, the team that can run the ball in this game usually has a pretty favorable outcome. Drew Johnson, number 32, Midland's leading rusher, 347 yards on the year, 7.2 yards per carry and six touchdowns. A kind of a mishap, but Johnson's gonna drive ahead. Powerful run for six yards. He was hit early on, but he just uh, drove legs forward and uh, had a nice pickup on first down. It'll be uh, second and four for the Chemex. Number Johnson, a threat. Eli Gordon, the flanker, number 20, he's a threat. Chase Mahavir, the tight end, number 24, he's a threat. Drew Barry, number 19, um, another threat. Yeah. So th this team's loaded with options. Smith in motion is going to be Johnson again. This time he's met a uh, really nice play by Caleb Brensky, number 17, on the defensive line for Dow. Well, you see this um, formation by Midland. When we watched him play against Mount Pleasant a couple of weeks ago, they would sneak Smith out of the backfield for pass plays. And you see right now Dow's got two safeties back, preventing that from happening. So that's allowing Midland some room to run up the middle. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, Third and about three. You know, offensive line for Kemix having a great year too. Center three, Parker Winter, number 53. Left guard Zach Wilder. Right guard Colin Coffey. Right tackle Ethan Church. Left tackle Logan Shaw. Third and three. There's a flag on the play. Might have been a false start on the Kemix. So they got a timeout. First charge timeout. First charge timeout. Uh, Coach Metner in his 12th season, 102 and 32 is his record. Didn't like what he saw there. Knows is a big play. Yeah. They want to really maintain ball control, maintain uh, field position. And so he uh, uh, called that timeout early on. You know, one thing we should mention too, Dave, is a pretty strong win tonight at Midland Stadium. Um, going from our left to right, from Washington Street basically to Midland High. And that might have a effect on the passing games from teams going into the win, in which Midland is doing right now. And some decision making on, uh, on whether the kick
kick or not. I would not be surprised if this is uh, four down. Let's get some momentum territory if uh, they don't get it right here. Dow High defense. The corners, Tucker Pomeranke, number four. Caden Kritz, number three. Their safeties, Carter Coates and Brandon Scott. Linebackers, Dawson Studebaker, Xavier St. John. Third and three Chemex, full house backfield again. And it's gonna be Gordon, he's gonna get the first down, drives ahead, follows the right side of that line, big hole, and he just plows ahead to move the chains. Now, is Gary Joseph that coach in this game? <laughs> this is old, old time middle and high football here, just run it, run it, run it. You see some pitch left and right, we know it will be. <laughs> Also for uh, Dow on the defensive line, Daniel Kowalczyk, number 53, Caleb Brensky, we mentioned him before, number 17, Daniel Watkins. Uh, and the defensive ends, Aiden Wardle and Evan Kronowski. Pitch right, there you go to Johnson. Tripped up nicely by uh, 58, that was Watkins. A really nice play, it looked like uh, he may have some room to run, but yeah. chopped down by Watkins. Nice play. I know we're used to seeing Johnson go up the middle between the tackles. That time there was a little bit of a adjustment to that pitch right, and he showed his speed. He's, you know, he's 215 pounds, very strong kid, but uh, he's he's also got the the footwork and the speed to get outside as well, and that's that's uh, makes him a very valuable weapon for the Chemics. Johnson leads the Cummings with seven touchdowns on the year. Eli Gordon has six, as does Money, and Ty Smith has five. It's gonna be Money with the keeper. He's got, gonna get about three. It looks like he was gonna be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he kind of uh, picked his way ahead for three yards. Brings up third and uh, five. Oh, so far, Dave, all run plays. Right. Yeah. So I mean, Dow's focused in on the, on the run play, but at the same time, they got to be thinking, okay, play action pass. We got to be aware of that. But every defender for Dow is inside that box right now. Well, when they have the no wideouts, yeah. probably good good <laughs> idea. Money's going to keep it again, plowing ahead behind the line. He's probably a little short. Money. Uh, you said he. This is probably four down territories. Fourth and one. Yeah. It'll be a long field goal against the wind. They're just going to put their trust in that offensive line right now. Fourth down, left of the yard. Money picked up four on that play. So another uh, big play here, just shy of the 25 yard line. Keep it. Oh, he's got the edge. Oh, he cut back. Still on his feet all the way inside the 15. Boy, I thought maybe he could uh, get the edge for more, but he cut back up and big gain on first down for Al Money, the senior quarterback. And the Chemics move the chains once again, yeah. chewing up a lot of clock on this drive. 6.20 to go in the first quarter. So again, we just saw Middle and be able to get outside on Dow, and I was uh, I was with you. I thought, uh oh, he's got the corner. I think he can get to the end zone, but he stopped and uh, tried to make a cut up field. Yep, down to the 14-yard line again. All rushing plays so far for the Chemics. Gordon sweeping left, got room to run, plows ahead inside the five to the four. Good combo of speed and power for Eli Gordon. He'll bring up first and goal from the four. That play we saw the Chemics run very effectively against Mount Pleasant. And uh, you can see why. The offensive line um, really in sync, getting good lead blocks and uh, powerful running by Eli Gordon. Old school power football right here by the Chemics. Time they have uh, Ty Smith wide out to the right. Money's going to keep it. Plowing ahead gets a couple of yards. There's a flag in the play. Offsides on Dow is the early indication. So they might as well 
will take that and save the down. Jarrett Wagner, number 11, comes into the game, as does seven Carter Thomas for the Chemics. Placing Gordon and Smith. First and goal from the two. To that first to the Dow penalty, first penalty of the game. Money again, drives ahead, in for the touchdown. Man, Chris, that was one impressive drive that for was, the Celtics. That's a every statement. That's every coach's dream. Can we run the football? Yes, we can run the football. Because when you can run the football, you can dictate a lot of things in a football game. And, and basically, middle just shoved it down their throat. I mean, that was an impressive uh, drive, long drive by the Kimmicks, all runs. Seven minutes, 5.03 to go in the first quarter, seven minute drive. And head ad will be the uh, for the extra point. It's up and it is good. Good rush by Chargers, but the dad uh, sneaks it in and the Cummings jump on top, 7 nothing here in the city championship game. One thing, Dave, I mean, we were talking about the team stats before the game, and uh, defensively, you look at Dow, and they've given up 717 yards rushing on the season through five games. Yeah. And that's, that's a lot of yards, and I'm sure Middle High is you know, honed in on that all week and, and looked at the film and looked at what Mount Pleasant did against them. And they said, we're going to run the football tonight until you can stop us. And that first drive was impressive. That might be the best drive I've seen them have all season, <laughs> to be honest with you. So now it will be Dow High's turn. They will, they will be led by sophomore quarterback Jack Bacus, who's having a phenomenal sophomore year. 846 yards passing, he leads the Saginaw Blue Division. 10 touchdown passes, only four interceptions. And uh, he's got a wide out crew, includes Tuck, Tucker Pomeranke, Carter Coates, Caden Kritz, Jack Erickson, 25. Back as the sophomore is the QB. I think the first thing you're gonna notice about Bacus is his size. Yeah. 6'5", 210, real strong athletic athlete. My dad will do the kicking duties for the Chemex. A high pooch kick fielded at the 23 yard line. Uh oh, could be a big return here. Nice, good return for the Chemex on the opening kickoff and a great return for Dow High. Keaton Kritz, number three, showing a good burst of speed to give the Chargers excellent field position. Kritz is one of the Dow playmakers uh, on the season. He's, he's one of the top rushers on the team with He's averaging 10.5 yards per carry with a couple of touchdowns. So we'll see, important for Dow to answer to, uh, on this drive. We will start things off at the 39 yard line. Evan Kronowski, number 21 at running back. Coach goes in motion, a little shovel pass to him. Finds the edge, nice gain on first down for the Chargers, gained about five yards. Maybe we'll call it six. And they will be operating behind the offensive line that features at left tackle, number 54, Jason Labby. Number left guard, 59, Nick Fang. Center, 57, Alec Kronowski. At right guard, 53, Daniel Kowalczyk. And at right tackle, 79, Charlie Hunkins. And uh, we mentioned Charlie Hunkins was a captain for the coin toss. He is a big dude, senior, sure 6'5", 315. Back to pass. It's going to be blown dead. There's a flag. It's going to be Motion. a false start on the Chargers. We'll give back five of those six yards they had gained. We were going to see the first pass from uh, Bacus, and he uh, said he's – Oh, nearly 65% of his pass yeah. is very impressive. 846 yards, as we mentioned. He can sling it. He can sling it. I, and what's impressed me about him is I've watched film on him and uh, and watched him in warm-ups is how quick he gets that ball out of his hands. He's got a super quick release. Carter Coach, the leading receiver, or second, has 15 catches on the year. It's a little handoff, kind of a Statue of Liberty type play, but uh, nothing doing. The Kemmick sniffed that one out as Kritz uh, took the handoff. And he'll gain about a yard, maybe two. 
So Tucker Pomeranke, 18 catches on the year, 265. Both Coates and Pomeranke with four touchdown catches on the season. Up front on that Chemic defense, number five, Ty Fagan. 24, Chase Mahabier. 15, Hunter Kruger. And we'll see both 56, Chris Corrigan and Carter Thomas on that front. Looks like a false start on Dow it was. Again, yeah. uh, early jump by uh, Hunkins on the, the right tackle. They were just not in sync on the snap count, it didn't seem like. No, but, but again, Dave, I mean, you and I have seen a lot of these games through the years, and two things that will really hurt a team are penalties and turnovers Absolutely. in this game. And if you make penalties, you turn the ball over, your chances of winning diminish greatly. This is freebies for the opponent. Now you're third and uh, 12. Linebacker crew for Midland, number eight, Zion Douglas, Drew Barry, number 19, and Drew Johnson, number 32. Baker's back to pass. Fires downfield, and it is knocked away. Excellent defensive job by the Chemex. Nick Dower, the safety number one, breaking it up. Ball kind of hung up on uh, it, Bacus, I thought. It, it did. I thought Pomeranke had a step on the defenders, though, so if he could have thrown that another five yards downfield, I think he could have had a shot at it. Yeah, that's right. Maybe just got hung up. That, that wind held it up a bit and uh, had to turn into a defender to uh, knock that ball away. Otherwise, Dower may have had the pick. Eli Gordon is safety, also for the comics. He's back deep to return the punt. Line drive kick fielded by Smith at the 35. Good coverage by the Chargers. Now I'm trying to strip it free, but uh, Smith hanging on for dear life. Gets it out to about the 41, and Midland will take over a three and out by the Chargers. Well, once again, excellent field position for the Chemex. We'll see if they make any adjustments here. The first drive we saw of the game for, for them was all runs. Uh, let's see if they say, we'll do this until you stop us. Would not be a bad strategy, you wouldn't <laughs> say, because it, um, it certainly worked the first drive. And it looks like it. That is one tight formation there with <laughs> I don't think you get any tighter than that, Dave. <laughs> Smith and uh, Gordon on the, the wing backs. Looks like a double wing. Not sure what Coach Metner would call this formation, but that's essentially what that is with Johnson in the backfield. Two tight ends. It's going to be Johnson on the carry, plowing ahead, still on his feet. Will not be denied all the way into the Dow territory again, down to the 42-yard line. And so the Midland High just imposing its will right now, and Johnson is a powerful runner. Dave, that's a great term, imposing your will, because how discouraging and demoralizing it is for a defense to not be able to stop the run. Uh, no matter what level, NFL, college, right. or high school, you got to be able to stop the run, and if that keeps happening, uh, quite discouraging for the team. First and 10, Chemex. Johnson again. Nice job on the Dow defense. He's gonna pick up two, two and a half on the play. Defensive line uh, held its ground that time. Quite see who is in on the initial hit, but uh, well done by the Chargers. Well, one thing uh, I don't know if you get to the keys of the game, but I was saying that you know Dow got shut out last week, and I think offensively for them they need to get some points on the board in this first half. We'll see what they do defensively here. Johnson again, e excellent play there by number two for the Chargers, Dawson Studebaker. He got low and uh, grabbed the ankles and just would not let go. Excellent play by the linebacker Studebaker. Well, third and what, seven or eight? And we're really, this is the first passing down yeah, situation I, Midland's faced. With about two minutes to go here in the quarter. I feel like it's a big play for Dow defense. Get off the field, right? 
Yeah, exactly. Money back to pass. Looking downfield. He's the only guy on that side of the field. Flag on the play. Money's got enough for the first down, but this might be coming back. It's a flag in the middle and high backfield. Excellent job by Money. He rolled right, and he had to run because there were no receivers on the right side. He got enough yardage for the first, but we will see here what the damage is. Holding. And it is holding on the Chemex. Well, for Midland, the unfortunate part about that call is the, the hold was away from the play. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a big relief for Dow because yeah. uh, uh, it was a third and long. Now it's third and very long. Yeah. Behind the line is a spot foul. It's a third and 22. Third and 22. Yeah, that's a monster penalty. Yeah, for sure. Well, they're going with that full house backfield and yeah. third and forever. It's going to be Gordon driving ahead. What? It's a good yardage, uh, about nine yards to uh, bring it to midfield with a minute to go in the quarter. I'm sure Midland got a punt here. Money is the punter for Midland, which always adds a little dynamic to uh, the kicking game where your quarterback is your punter and <laughs> it makes the uh, fake all, all the more real. Right. But I don't think we'll see a fake here. The no. fourth and 13 at midfield, Midland's gonna wanna uh, keep winning the field position, position battle. Money line drive kick, takes a Midland bounce, a tremendous oh, Midland boy. bounce. Wow, Al Money, very effective, a huge punt from the 50 to the four. So a 46 yard punt pins the Chargers deep. Well, take another look at this one. You know, and this was against the wind too, Dave, and he it gets the great roll for the Chemex and is downed right there at the four yard line and terrible field position for the Chargers. The Chargers need to get the chains moving here to sustain, uh, sustain the drive and feel good about themselves. Yeah, so I think that was by design. They didn't want Dow to return it. This a line drive to try to get that, that new turf, beautiful turf field down there and kind of use that to get the roll, and it worked well. So Bacus would take the snap from the goal line. He's going to keep it, and he's going to lose yardage. He's going to lose a couple yards. The Kemic defensive front swarming on Bacus. Bacus is Dow's leading rusher on the season, Dave. Yeah, they're more, definitely more of a passing team. Yeah, he's got 183 yards on the season, averaging three yards per run with four touchdowns. But yeah, he's noted for his arm and his passing ability. Yeah, now only 343 yards rushing on the season. That will be the end of the first quarter. We will switch fields. And Chris, we didn't get a chance before the game to talk about uh, what do you see as the keys to the game? The keys to the game, well, as I assess this game, and uh, I'm assuming they're gonna pop up here on the screen. <laughs> but here we are. For middle and high, the formula, stick to the formula is basically what I'm saying here. They've been complimentary football offense, defense, special teams. It's all worked well the first five games. They're averaging 46 points a game, and they're only giving up nine. So that formula is working. To me, pressure defense, attack, attack, attack. Uh, Dow has not been able to run the ball well this season so far, and I think the defense just needs to put pressure on, on the offense, um, on back, Bacus, to, to make him make plays and win the field position battle. Well, we just saw that right there. They punted the ball and it landed within the five-yard line, so make Dow drive the field, I think, is important for uh, the Kimmicks. As for the Chargers, 
score early. I mean, you got shut out last week against Mount Pleasant, so you might have some doubts about your offense being able to click. Well, eliminate those doubts by scoring. And then uh, no big plays for middle high and zero turnovers. You cannot turn the ball over in this game. I already mentioned that earlier, but that's so crucial in this city championship game. Do not turn the ball over. It's a feeding frenzy for the other team when that happens. So big here, plays here for the sophomore from the own two yard line. A lot of wide outs. A pitch in the end zone, and he's gonna get free. Great run, what a tremendous wow. run. It looked like he was gonna be tackled around the goal line, but quick feet. And uh, that's Kronowski had, had taken that pitch, and he's going to move the chain. What a huge play for the Chargers. That was a fantastic run. That, that was Coates, was it, number 22? Oh, yeah. All yes, right, Coates. so pressure on Bacus. I thought it was going to be a safety. Nope, he gets the pitch, and basically it's all him right now. A couple of nice blocks there, but he is just churning up field before he gets brought down. Great play by Coates. First first down of the game for Dow. Little shovel pass again. A lot of blue jerseys waiting for that one. Midland defense had that one sniffed out and just swarmed on Coates. I'll tell you, Coates is impressive. He's got that quick, the quick feed yeah. and the movement there. Uh, if he gets open, he 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 can make some uh, big plays for the Chargers. No gain, it could have been a loss. Um, so it did well to get back to the line of scrimmage. But a good discipline defense for, for Midland. It's in the secondary for the Chemex, 20 Eli Gordon, Dower as a safety, and the corners Ty Smith and Louis Serafin, number four. Second and 10. And uh, they didn't get the playoff in time. They Forgot about the play clock, really. Yeah. Cause he was down to zero, and they were nowhere close to snapping the ball, it didn't seem like. And this is the first year, I think you and I both uh, said this on previous broadcasts, is they have the play clock in the end zone right. for the first time. And it, it's a 25 second play clock in high school. So interesting, Chris, I don't know if you've seen this before, but the, the for both sides, the center has the ball in the yeah. huddle. <laughs> and Taking it with them to the line of scrimmage. I don't know if it's because of the threat of rain. Or I was thinking, so the wind doesn't blow the ball around, maybe? Maybe. I don't recall seeing that before. <laughs> Take us back to pass. Fires deep downfield. He's got his man. What a catch. Boy, uh, that's uh, Coates again. Bacus uh, chucked it up, and Coates went up and got it. Yeah. I'll tell you, well, this is Bacchus dropping three, two, three steps back, sees Coates in the open and just makes a pinpoint pass and a nice grab by Coates. So Dow. That, that's one of those throws where you trust your wide receiver right. to make the play. Yep, absolutely. So another huge play taking out to the 37. Drive started on the four. Bacchus going deep again, again to Coates. This time it's intercepted. He kind of did the same thing. He lofted yeah. it up to try to get Coach to make a play, but Ty Smith was all over the coverage. Hauled it in, stayed in bounds, and that's where he said, can't have turnovers. That, that was for Bacus. That was his, really the only option on the play. He wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. And, uh, he threw it into double coverage, though. Yeah, he threw it into coverage. The play really wasn't there. and. Double nope. coverage, Smith in the in the sideline. Yeah, exactly. They had nowhere to go with it. He had his mind made up. He was going to make that throw. So Ty Smith, we had talked about him a lot back in the Mount Pleasant game. He had a phenomenal, especially second half, and uh, he makes his presence known here in the second quarter. So you can see Bacchus, Bacchus drops back, and he just wings it out there, yeah. and Smith cut in front of the ball. Nice play by Smith. To reverse to Gordon. He's got a block out front from Johnson, and he's going to get into Dow territory and move the chains. Tackled by Aiden Wardell, number 28, but a well-run play by the Chemex. Gordon showing his speed and power. Great blocking again by the Chemex. 
between Gordon and Smith, you got two guys who can make a big play at any given moment. And what, what a luxury to have when that right. could be through the air or on the ground. And then Johnson can hurt you. Mm -hmm. It's Johnson. Big hole, tripped up nicely. It was, boy, that was a big play by uh, number 11, Brandon Scott. If he doesn't trip him up, he might still be running. He got a full head of steam. You see the Dow High student section exhorting their Chargers defense to try to make a stop here. Chemics on the move after the interception, second and four. Midland offense really mixing things up. It's money on the keep around the left edge. Held up, he's gonna be, probably move the chain. It's gonna be really close. It was a uh, good play by Caden Kritz on the edge to slow him down. Money had a head of steam and he had to slow things down and then two other chargers came in to clean it up but not before Money gets enough yardage to move the chains once again for the Chemex. They're sticking to the formula of keeping the ball on the ground. And it's working. Have not passed it yet. I don't think it. Has and they got the wind to their back right now. No, I don't think they have. First and 10, Chemex. Going with that tight double wing formation again. Smith, round right. He's got a wall of blockers in front of him. Cuts back up. He gets tripped up by Coates, but again, Midland will move the chains. There was just blue, a wave of blue <laughs> blockers in front of him. Going to pick up another big chunk down to the 24-yard line. The rushing game is it's been dominant. getting, it's not the three yard in a cloud of dust. They're no. making, picking up chunks here right now. It's diversified within the right. tackles. Johnson's gonna take it, another big hole. He's tripped up after five or six yard gain. It was Dawson Studebaker on the stop. We'll call it five yards for Johnson. Well, Midland's picking up a minimum of five yards per carry on this drive. And it's either outside or it's inside. <laughs> And Dow, Dow has got to figure out a way to stop this running game or it's going to be a long night for them. Johnson again. And he is able to uh, fall Johnson. forward. He got hit and he gains up, a, gets a couple extra yards on the carry, bring up a third and two. Third and two. When you're running the ball effectively, you kind of wonder if it's still four down territory, even though you're getting down deep here. I would think momentum is on their side to keep pounding the ball, really. Johnson again plows ahead down to it, close to the 10 yard line. Just following those blockers. Johnson, a lead blocker, also excellent. Uh, lead block by uh, 55 on the Chemex at Zach Wilder. Again, just power, power football here with Johnson just barreling up the middle. But Dave, you have to wonder, you know, the seniors from Middle High, they were in that game last year where they just got yeah. annihilated. Really, they, they were picked to win the game and they got beat 42 to seven. How much does that play into their psyche tonight? Johnson again. Tripped up well. That was a nice play by uh, uh, the D lineman. That was number 50. Uh, Xavier St. John with an excellent stick on Johnson. Hold him to a yard. Second and nine. Yeah, I don't even know if he got a yard on that. I'm going to call that no gain. St. John linebacker came up and uh, just made a great stick low. You always hear low man wins <laughs> when you're in the trenches like this. 
Johnson again, driving ahead. Powerful run again, spinning down to about the two. Well, we've watched Johnson for two games now, Mount Pleasant, the Dow game, and I have yet to see one player, one defender bring him down. It usually takes two or three guys to bring him down. It'll be third down, a yard to go from the three yard line, we'll call it. It's hard to know exactly where the ball, because the center <laughs> takes it with him. <laughs> Got to guess by where the official is, but yeah, it is a three yard line. 32. This time, Money following his blockers. Touchdown, Kemigs. Al Money with the second score of the game. Just a huge hole on the left side of that Kemig line doing serious damage again. He just followed Wilder and Coffee into the end zone. Well, once again, a very efficient drive by middle and high, and it was all started with the turnover. Right. And again, turnovers are a feeding frenzy for the team that gets the turnover, and middle and high made Dow pay. That ball is blocked. He got close the first time, but uh, uh, came storming in was Brandon Scott from the safety. He got his hand on it and blocks the extra point. So the chemic lead will be 13 0 with 4.20 to go in the half. Take another look at this one. And it's actually left tackle. Logan Shaw was, oh, this is the extra unblocked. point. Yeah, unblocked he yeah, comes he, in. He, what a play. Outstanding all all out effort there. 13 nothing. Thought we, on that touchdown run, he just followed the left side of that line. That was like left guard Zach Wilder and left tackle Logan Shaw. Yeah. Just, uh, um, Similar to the play, Big. here it is right here. Just similar, yeah. follow, follow your lineman right there and go into the end zone pretty much untouched. Let's see Money get the ball here. Look at all those blockers clearing the way untouched into the end zone. Well then, yeah, in addition, there were uh, got right guard coffee pulled. And Barry and, was in there too as a blocking back. And let's add Johnson as well. So that was <laughs> It's like 600 pounds of... Uh, <laughs> Blocking right there. So second rushing touchdown on the day for Money. Same play basically as the first play. Yeah. Or first touchdown. Al Money with 246 yards rushing on the season coming in. Had six touchdowns. Now he has eight on the ground. All right, Dave. So just this power attack for the Chemics uh, continues. This is not 1978. This is uh, <laughs> 2020. Dad with that high pooch kick fielded. It was uh, 17. He touched it though, so Brinsky it was Caleb Brensky. Um, fortunate for him, it went out of bounds because it was a live ball. But Dow will take over on their 17. And they got to find a way to uh, move the it chains. It just feels like get some big plays and yeah. uh, get the Kemic defense on their heels a little bit. You know. It's only 13 nothing. It's only 13 nothing, but they've got to do something to make themselves feel good about themselves. Right, right. You know, sustain a couple of first down drives or come up with a big play. They got to do something to give their offense some confidence here. But they do have a long way to go here. They did show some offensive life before that turnover. There's a flag on the play, a false start on Dow again. It's just not what they needed. Three. Every drive has started 15. with a penalty for them. Just seem a little out of sync. Whereas at least for the first half, uh, the Chemics are on all cylinders. All cylinders. And all rushing. <laughs> I don't think. No pass. He went back to pass on the one and yeah. ended up running the ball. Yeah. Cool fall evening here at Midland Community Stadium. Bake is going to motion via direct snap. And uh, he just got buried. Great job by the Kemic defense. Zion Douglas came in, sniffed that one out, and uh, tripped up Critz. It was a Wildcat uh, play. Direct snap to Critz. 
Um, but uh, Midland showing very good discipline here on defense and keeping their not just biting on uh, some of the trickery. Got to get this play off, Dave. Less yep. than five seconds to go. Second and 15. Vegas back to pass. Fires downfield again, and he's got his man. <laughs> you know he can see what his favorite target. You can yeah. see why, because that's uh, Carter Coates just goes up and gets it. He's not a big guy, not, no. or not a tall guy. He's got really quick He's feet and great hands. Again, you'll just see Bacus drop back here. He's looking for his man. Coates flings it out there, and it's just a nice grab by him between two defenders. Yeah, in coverage. Maybe this will be the big play that they need to get a little momentum going for themselves. Yeah, I like the play call. Just try to get the ball downfield. Yeah. Four wide outs. Bacus back to pass. Fires a short one. And still on his feet. He's going to move the chain. A great job out there. It was uh, 25 was the receiver, Erickson. Well, now Dow's getting to a little bit of rhythm. This time, Bacus just drops back one step, finds Erickson along the sidelines and guns it to him. We talked about it earlier, but Bacus really has a quick release, doesn't he? Does. he? I mean, he gets that ball to shoulder, and <laughs> that ball is out of his hands, zips it. 6'5", sophomore quarterback. Dowhai on the move here. Bacus going to keep it this time. Poke his way ahead for about three yards, just inside Kemick territory, with two and a half to go in the first half. See, I, I was thinking, Dave, we'd see more of that. You know, Bacus is a big guy, hard to bring down. Get him running the ball a little bit. Make you make middle have to be concerned with his running as much as his passing. Okay, they've crossed midfield here. Yeah, this could be a really big dri drive for Dow High. If they Going get the points half. on the yep. board, would just shift momentum a bit. Little shovel pass. And he's in trouble. Critz nowhere to run. He tried to his best to stay on his feet, but the Kemic defense just swarmed. I mean, Smith, uh, you could yeah. say half the defense in yeah. on that he play. Heavy pursuit. This is the handoff here. As is it? That was uh, Critz. Critz comes along right there. He's looked for a hole, but he couldn't find it. So he bounces outside. And here comes the pursuit by Midland High. And at that point, he sees like six or seven guys in blue right in front of him. You know who really made that play was Chase Mojave. Or he, 24, he, he got in there, and that's who he was meeting, and that yeah. forced him back. Right. He wanted to turn up field, yeah. and he couldn't. Fake is back to pass. A little screen pass, and nothing doing. Again, well sniffed out. Johnson in on the stop, as well as um, Thomas. And Midland call a timeout, Dave. Yeah, fourth and long. Midland uh, will want to get the ball back. Dow's going to have to punt into the wind. Have a chance to get pretty good field position here. Pomerick, he's limping off the field, too. He took a hard hit on that play. It was, you know, that's a pretty good play call. You run a screen. You haven't, haven't run that, but uh, just excellent. M I'm Middle very impressed with the discipline of the Midland defense. Yeah, they've it just it out. There's blue jerseys everywhere you run. Their tempo and speed at getting to the ball is pretty impressive tonight. Well, I, I, I think in that drive, Dow saw some good things, right? I mean, they were right. able to complete a couple of passes. They still need to get some yards on the ground, though. That's, that's something they need to make adjustments at halftime, try to figure, figure that out. And right now, they need a nice punt to flip the field here on Midland. Dawson Studebaker, number two, doing the punting duties for Dow. And number two, Smith, will receive the punt for Midland. Nice snap. Midland almost gets it. It's going to be a short kick. Takes a Dow bounce. Probably should just let it go and let, kill some clock here. <laughs> 50 <laughs> seconds to go. Midland's only got one timeout left. Oh. 
see if they air it out here to try to. Okay, right now, officials are talking there at about the 36 yard line, but there's no flag on the field, is there, Dave? No, there wasn't. I was watching. Oh, there might be on the far side over there on the 40. Is that a flag? talking to the Midland coaching staff about what they want to do. So I, it might have been a false start by Dow. There was a little contact with the punter, but really the rusher held up. Right. It was marginal. So it looks like they're going to make them repunt it. Yeah. Even though that will take up some more time. That punt took 11 seconds the first time. Well, Midland we're almost got trade, the ball. Trade some time with for field position here. I, I, I sense a heavy rush coming for the punter. Fourth and 23. Yeah, they should have a chance to get the ball, end up with the ball near midfield, you'd think. Yeah. He's 15 yards deep to receive the snap. Line drive. It's going to be sh short and it's going to work out well for Dow. Sure did. The line drive kick is going to take off uh, some eight seconds more off the clock and I think uh, Dow might have gained a little edge on field position with that. For sure. Well, here we are. We have 42 seconds left in the first half, and I say it is crucial for Dow to not let Midland get any points. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a two-score game now. You can come back in the second half, but you don't want it to get to be a three-score game. So this time, different formation. There will have some wideouts here for the Chemics. Zion Douglas, number eight, out here to the right. Johnson's going to take the carry. There's a whistle. I think Dow called timeout. Yep. Yep. Dow burns their first timeout of the half. I think they just saw the formation was a little different, and I think Coach Peterson wanted to just talk to the troops and make sure that they were on the same page. So, folks, you know, you can watch replays of this Chemex versus Dow High Charger football game on the MCTV network. MCTV's channels can be found on Charter Spectrum channels 188 through 191 in Midland and through channel 99 on at and UVerse. The game is also live streaming on MCTV network Community Voices YouTube channel in beautiful high definition. Check out the MCTV website at cityofmidlandmi.gov backslash MCTV for playback dates and times or follow us on Facebook to learn more. I'd also like to give a shout out to the folks over at Dow Diamond for hosting tonight's game. Got a big group of fans over there, so all the fans tuning in, welcome. Glad you're uh, able to catch all the action in the city championship game. First and 10, Chemex. Will we see a pass, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> Money back to pass. He's going to go deep. Looking for Gordon. Just overthrew him. We look like Gordon held up just a little bit. Um, that was a, that he was had, a bit, had a step on him. He sure did. That was old-fashioned fly pattern. Just run as fast as you can down the field. So second and 10, 38 seconds. Probably figure even if you throw it deep, if it gets picked, you know, you probably, that would still have a long way to go. Yeah. And why not try to go for the home run? Gordon split wide to the right. And Johnson's gonna take the handoff. He's gonna plow ahead for about three. And maybe the Chemics are gonna be content to run it out here. Studebaker in on the stop for Dow. Third and seven, the clock is running. Go for the home run here again, yeah. maybe? Uh, I'm At the say, last play of the game, or the not? half. Fumbles the snap, Money just wisely falls on it. And uh, that will, I think we'll end the half unless Dow Did called Dow, a timeout. They may have. No, nope. Midland's leaving the field, but Dow's looking like they're expecting another play. 
the officials are not stopping the chemics. So <laughs> I think it's on the I officials to call them back at this point. And you're right, Dow is not heading to the locker room. They wanted a timeout, and there's no time on the scoreboard. They may, I think they may be saying they caught the timeout with a second to go, possibly. Somebody needs to let the chemics know if that's. Nope, no, they're, they're going to. They think that didn't happen. So Dow is going to head into the locker room, and we will. Um, Turn it over to halftime here. Unfortunately, our, the bands aren't unable to perform. There's a threat of a lot of rain here tonight, Chris. And yeah. you know, you got the all the instruments and everything, and you just can't really take a chance on on well, damaging those. So unfortunately, that's you know that the band performance at this game is usually a spectacle. Spectacle for sure. Um, it's it's been a weird weather day, Dave. I mean, yeah. this morning it was 65 degrees, and <laughs> right. when we get to the stadium, it's probably 45 degrees. A strong wind, as we mentioned earlier. So we have uh, about a 15-minute halftime. We're gonna um, send it down to the field. We got the they do have the pom pom squads uh, performing here at half, and so we'll get to in, enjoy that. And we will be back for the second half in, in just a little bit. Again, at halftime, the Midland Chemics 13, the Dow Chargers nothing. Coach is heading in the locker room to, to make some adjustments. We'll see what Coach Peterson in his first Midland Dow game uh, can come up with in the locker room. Welcome to the field, the combined power of the Midland High Varsity Palm and the Dow High Varsity Palm team. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, your Chemic and Charger Varsity Pom Pom Squads. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV, Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user.
With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user. With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user. With the MCTV Network, you can share your story through television, online video, social media, and podcasts. Since 1984, MCTV has provided public access to television for the people and organizations of Midland. This hasn't changed. However, there are many other ways for you to reach your audience wherever they are and whenever they want. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Looking for a new hobby? How would you like to create your own television show? Call Midland Community Television at 837-3474 to sign up for our next orientation studio workshop. You will learn how to use a studio camera, learn how to edit on a computer, or even be the host of your very own TV show. Don't wait. Sign up today. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to sign up. Midland Community Television, your community voice. Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube 
or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. I had an interest in producing programs and uh, Midland Community Television was a perfect outlet for that and has been for the last 30 years a way for somebody to uh, become involved with the production of television programs and and saying what you want to say showing what you want to show with very few limits on it and then having that actually be uh, produced and sent out to the community at large The MCTV Network helps Midland residents share their story with the community. Our media producer workshops will help you get started. In one short session, you will learn how to create media that will educate, entertain, and enrich the community in which we live. Get registered for a workshop by calling 837-3474, follow us on Facebook for more information, and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube and your podcast platform for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Your local public access facility gives you the opportunity to engage your community with your own television show. The content on our Community Voices channel ranges from talk shows, variety hours, and nonprofit informational specials. With the power of video continuing to gain steam, there's no better facility to produce your own content. Check out the City of Midland website or give us a call for more information. The sooner you do, the sooner you can make your own show. Where there's an issue, where there's a challenge, where there's an opportunity, MCTV is a main component of bringing people together to work together, to talk together, to dream together, to visualize together, and to implement things that are good for the quality of life in our community. Looking for a new adventure? How about an opportunity to volunteer in the community? Then come down to MCTV, Midland Community Television. You can learn how to use a studio camera, run equipment in the control room, or be the host of your own TV show. Call MCTV at 837-3474 to find out how you can become a volunteer producer or access user.
that gave them a good, decent field position. They were able to punch it in. And, and, and Midland, um, you know, sticking to the formula. Right. And that is exceptional offense, exceptional defense, special teams. And right now, Dave, they do not have a passing yard. No. And it's all rushing. They have 100, as we'll see right now uh, on the keys of the game, uh, the formula, they're averaging 46 points a game and, and allowing only nine. Well, right now, Dow's got zero. Attack and defense, the defense is playing awesome tonight. And win the field position battle, we've seen that. They flip the field on a punt. They've uh, been able to uh, get good kickoff returns. They got the interception around the 50, so they're winning that. In all three of these keys, that they're, they've hit spot on. Dow score early, well, they haven't scored yet. They got to feel good about themselves at some point. Sustain a drive, get the ball in the end zone, get a field goal, reward the offense for playing well. Uh, fantastic plays, no big plays for Midland. Well, they really haven't had big plays, but Midland's just been a dominant rushing team, and they haven't been able to stop the run. Zero turnovers, well, we know they've already thrown one interception. So, But they got us. They have to stop the run in the second half in order to get back in this ball game. It is only a two-score game, and Midland had missed the extra point, uh, or was blocked by Dow. So it's it's not like it's a blowout. Right. It, it, it feels that way whenever you have somebody dominating the line of scrimmage, it kind of feels that way. But Dow is, they're going to get the ball to start the second half. I'm sure they'll make some adjustments uh, offensively to try to get some big plays, move the ball down the field. But they could, they can turn momentum pretty quickly if they get a good drive here to start the half, um, get it to a one-score game, then uh, – you know, this could be a whole different story in the second half. No, I, I agree with you, Dave. I mean, it's 13 nothing. It feels bigger than that because Midland's dominated offensively. But Dow gets the ball here and scores. It's a close ball game. Right, exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's a one-score game, and Dow could take a lead if, if that happens on, a, on another TD. But Dow, Dave, Dow has 73 yards in total offense in the first half. 66 yards passing and just seven on the ground. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they connected on two pretty long plays, which have really accounted for much of the offense. Like you said, Midland uh, nearly 150 yards rushing, zero pa yards passing. Only attempted that one long right. uh, pass towards the end of the half. Um, and it's just uh, completely relied on the running game so far. Well, Pomerick, Tucker Pomerick, has been neutralized for Dow, but I, I really like Carter Coates. He's, I mean, he is fun to watch. He's an exciting right. athlete, and he made that terrific run out of the, out of their own end zone and gave him a big yardage play. And he will be one of the deep men for the Chargers on this kickoff, as is number 11, Brandon Scott. You see, the Kemi kickoff formula is generally to pooch it high down around the right 20 yard line and that's what it is again but this time out of bounds that's a not a great kickoff and it will give Dow a good field position it's always a pretty big penalty to kick the ball out of bounds because you yep. uh, it's instant field position for uh, the other team well we're, we were talking about stats we mentioned 73 total yards for Dow middle high has 146 yards total offense all rushing zero through the air Johnson leads them with 59 yards Gordon has 46 and money has 33 on the ground with a couple of touchdowns so we're gonna re-kick this so now must taking the penalty by re-kicking just five yards right yeah. yeah, but instead of getting the ball at the 35, they're going to – I think they're going to – what they're really trying for is to try to get a big uh, big return. You know, you got the dangerous coach returning and see if he can pop one big. Line drive, and it's mishandled. Going to pick it up and return it. Still on his feet. <laughs> so – Brandon Scott. Hauled down, thrown to the ground by Mahabir. So through all that. <laughs> paid off. <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> they gained two yards off of it. Really pretty nice return by Scott. It was a real nice return by Scott. It, 
cutting back here, and he had room to run. Whoop! He had not before Mahavir brings him down <laughs> and throws him down at the 36. So sophomore Bacus, if he can get things rolling, it's going to be a pitch right. It's on the ground, and it is still loose. Finally covered up by the Chargers. Oh, what a huge break for coach. Dow in in that uh, coach recovered it, but um, huge loss on the play. Oh man, well, this is an old-fashioned option play here, and and you'll see Bacus get the ball and make a quick pitch and over the left shoulder. Uh, it was to Kronowski, Kronowski was the pitch. Yeah. And the ball squirted back all the way inside the 10 oh, no. yard. No, Coach, it? Coach recovered it. Coach but. recovered it, yeah, at the 14. Huge but. loss for Dow, just what they don't need starting out the second half. Second and 33, 23 yard loss. Bakus is gonna keep it. And my, there's a flag on the play. This is gonna be a hold, I think. The. Uh, Mahavi are on the tackle. Not a lot of room to run for Vegas. Holding. Yeah, it was by, on the opposite side of the run, actually. The Holding. Hold down the Offense. Penalty defender. is declined. Yeah, it's going to be declined because it's going to bring up third and forever. Why? So no gain on the play, third and 33. So many coaches say, let's start out the second half with a strong drive, yeah. get momentum on our side. Well, for Dow, it's just gone in reverse. Not the way you want to start no. out the second half in the city championship game. Or any game. Yeah, or any game. <laughs> so really, here's... You try to get some yardage, but you don't want to turn it over here. A little bubble oh. screen, that is blown up. Mahabir, what a play. Chase Mahabir sniffed that out. They try to run a bubble screen to Kronowski, and Mahabir just blows it up. You'll wow. see Bacus get the ball here and make a quick pass to Kronowski, but Mahavir sniffed it out. He didn't, he was trying to, uh, didn't even take on the block of number 59 there no. for Dow, Nick Fang, and he just went straight to the receiver and timed it perfectly. It's like he knew what the play was. Exactly. He, he, yep. he read that immediately. Really heads up mental play and even better physical well, imposing play. Dow's punting against the wind here too. From He readjusted the line of scrimmage or? Delay of game. Why? Delay game on Dow. So just not a great start for the Chargers. It would be tough to get it back to the original line of scrimmage at this point for uh, Studebaker. So it'll march back third and 38. Ball's on the 10. And Dow's punt returner is at the Dow 35 to field the ball. Line drive kick. Smith's going to let it bounce, and it's just going to go take a sideways bounce, and Midland's going to get field position at about 35. Well, I would classify that as a discouraging opening series yeah. for the Chargers. You got good field position to start with the kickoff at the 37 yard line, and then you went backwards from there. And Midland's now starting out at the Dow 35. 30. Dow 35. So, yeah, if Midland just is able to <laughs> run this and score off of this, it, it'll be demoralizing for Dow. For sure. And that's why, Dave, I say right now, Dow's defense has to play the series of their lives yeah. right now. No points on this drive for Midland. Keep your team in the game. Javier and Barry at the wings this time. Johnson's going to take it. Plows ahead for six. He just was not going to be denied. He keeps that, those feet running. He might have been shaken up a little bit. Well, here we are between the tackles again for Johnson. And handoff for money straight ahead. Follow your blocking and gain six yards and when you're gaining six yards on first down it gives you a lot of options 
for second down. Money's going to keep it this time off to the right side. He is brought down. Brinsky, by, number uh, 17. Yep, by Brinsky. Good tackle. Third and short. Short two, a long one. And you figure the Dow defense is going to have to stand up Midland twice here. You got to like believe. a goal line stand. Yeah, kind of. I mean, before down territory. Money's going to keep it. Follows the block. Going to get the first down. Move the chains. First down, Midland Hogs. Great block by Johnson. Yeah. There's just a hole, then the lead block comes through, and you know I don't know if he was touched by the time he moved the chain. So. Yeah. Yep. Number 54, Coffee and and Johnson, I think, were the key guys blocking on this play. Yeah. 54 and Johnson both were able to create a nice opening for Money to shoot through, and here we are. Yeah. They have the guard coming, uh, pulling. Should to be the first running down, side. right, Dave? They got. Yeah, it's down. first down. Yeah. yeah. First and ten. Money's going to keep it again, following the blocks. They're going to drive ahead for about another four or five yards. Just nothing but power football for the Chemex the entire game. Running between the tackles and occasionally outside. I mean, that's just been what's been working for Midland. Why why stray from that when that's been working? <laughs> well, this – they. Go frequently with those two wing backs, but now they're, it's more of two blocking backs. Right. Well, now they're going back to the two wing backs with Smith and Gordon. Gordon in motion. It's going to be Johnson. Kind of a mishandled snap, threw off the timing of that play, and Dow uh, did a nice job, 53 and 51 in there. Deal, That's number 51, good. nice play. He made the tackle. 53, Kowalczyk also in there and there. Third and six here for the Chargers with 7.40 to go in the third quarter. It's Charger defense fighting hard, fighting for their lives right now. Well, here we are again. They need a big third down stop. Yeah, they want to try to, keep on fourth down, at least make have <laughs> middle and have to go five or six yards. Money's going to keep it. Not much doing. Nice job by the Charger front there. Interesting call for the Kamex here. Do you go for the field goal or you try to pick up the first down? Lycos in on the stop, 16. And uh, I don't know. I got to believe they're just going to try to pound it. <laughs> Keep are. pounding it. I mean, this is just purely confidence right here. It is. And Dow, if you don't get it, Dow has a long way to go. Yeah. Fourth and five for the Chemex. We may see a pass here. Gordon driving ahead. It's close. I think he's short. It's very close. This is one of those that depends on the spot. Dow sure thinks they stopped him. And they did. Huge well, stop for the Chargers. Boy, that's just what they needed. Will this be a momentum shift? But again, poor field position for them. But at least you stopped Midland. Right. Potential scoring drive. Which was almost a, considered a turnover after the <laughs> huge loss on the play. Yeah. So the Dow defense rises to the occasion. The fans are excited about that. They keep it a two-score game, six and a half to go in the third quarter. Well, no more penalties for Dow. They got to say that to themselves, and no more negative plays. The negative plays have killed them so far in this this half. Pomerinke split out wide to the left. Lycos in the left slot. Lycos goes in motion. A little shovel pass. Nothing doing. Great uh, defensive play by Hunter Kruger, number 15. He sniffed that out. That was yeah. Coach took uh, the shovel pass. Yeah. Gained a yard. And Kruger, like you said, number 15. Oh, Kept his discipline, kept his position, and made a nice tackle, solo tackle for him. Matt Rapanis, longtime uh, defensive coordinator for the Chemex, uh, really has the defense playing well. All season, nine All points season. per game. Yep.
Fake goes back to pass. Fires over the middle, got his man open. It's Pomeranke, and he's going to get enough for the first down. I'll tell you what, nice that, pass. Was, that was a beautiful pass under heavy pressure from number five. That's Ty Fagan, and, and you'll see Fagan, number five for Midland, come right up the gut, put pressure on Bacus, and Bacus delivers the ball right on target to Pomeranke, who makes a nice grab yep. and picks up the first down. Just found a little seam, and on the money was Bacos. Back to pass again. He's going to keep it. Quarterback draw. He's running down. He's not going to get uh, get much on that one. Zion Douglas, number eight, came in on that tackle. It was almost like he was spying the quarterback, and right. he just uh, ran him down for no gain. Douglas playing a really good game for the Chemics Yeah, tonight. he sure is. Outside linebacker, you'll see him keep his eyes on Bacus right here. And Bacus is all run when he gets the ball snapped to him. And Douglas tracks him down. Second and 10 for the Chargers. Four receivers out left. Bacus little bubble screen and just heavy pressure. That was Mahabir again. Really caused that interception. Well, it looked like Douglas got it his hand on the ball coming in from that right linebacker position. But regardless, Bacus had to hurry up that throw. He was under heavy yeah. pressure. Here we go. Now watch three middle and high defenders come in strong on Bacus. <laughs> and again, I think Douglas, number eight there, Got might have deflected it. Well, he may have uh, saved uh, Coach some punishment because there were four blue jerseys <laughs> waiting for him if he caught it. Third and ten, Chargers. Because back to pass over the middle, lofts it high again under heavy pressure. Well, he threw that ball backpedaling. He did yeah. not stand up and deliver it. That was a backpedal throw, and you I don't want to do that. You know, and that was, uh, it was, uh, who was in on the pressure there for the Chemics? Carter Thomas applying the heat, and the uh, ball just sailed high, and Dow will have to punt again. Chemics with an opportunity to get the ball in Dow territory. This whole half has been played on that side of the field so far. Need a nice punt here for Dow. Good punt, fair catch is by Smith. And they will uh, take over on the 48 yard line. We'll do the Chemex, 420 to go in the quarter. It's been a scoreless third quarter, but you know, like you said, major field, field position. Uh, Oh, advantage for Midland. What, what a luxury for the Chemics. You're, you're playing, you're starting your drives in Dallas territory. Yeah. First drive they had was at 35. Now they're starting at the 45. And meanwhile, Dow has to go 90 yards or yeah. 80 yards to, to punch it into the end zone. Yeah, against the tremendous Chemic defense. Well, number one in the in the league. Once again, Dave, the pressure's on the Chargers defense to come up with some stops yeah. here. Wideouts this time for the Chemex. Handoff to Eli Gordon. He's got room to run on the right edge. Plows over the defender. It's uh, Bacus on the stop, but uh, not after a big gain on first down for Gordon. They ran that sweep to the right side. He had, again, good blocking. Turn on the Jets down around the right side. We've been used to seeing Midland go up the middle. This time they go, this time they go outside with Gordon, who has great speed, and watch him get around the corner here, turn it up field. Nice block there by Johnson, his running mate at backfield, and uh, Midland's in business. 18-yard gain, handoff to Johnson. And uh, good job by the Chargers, gonna get about three. Really a nice job by uh, uh, number seven, Horn. And 17, Brinsky. he's had a nice game from his yeah. linebacker position. He's been in on a lot of tackles tonight for Dow. Yeah, he. Yeah, I think that's who it was. He he caused Johnson to uh, have to change field, change direction, and that allowed the rest of the Charger defense to uh, swarm. Yeah. Well, Midland's Second. had success running outside, Dave. I oh mean. yeah. And just chew up more clock with this running game. Gordon's going to keep it again, but uh, well done. 
28. Excellent play by the Charger. Wardell, Aiden Wardell. Nice play by him. That was excellent one-on-one -on -one tackle there. Yeah, because, you know, he makes that play for a loss and bring up third and long for the Chemex. And they've been been living on third and short, and, and uh, now they got to um, get nine. Well, so, yeah, the, the Charger defense is... Uh, been holding hey. strong here and under really adverse conditions. For sure. I would I would think there would be a pass play on this, but you don't know. I think Midland's going to call a timeout. The play clock was down to a second, and so they want to talk this one over. Folks, you like watching your favorite high school events on MCTV? Stay tuned for this fall. This fall, for more games and events on the MCTV network, MCT volunteers and staff will be televising girls volleyball, girls golf, and girls swimming. Check out our Facebook page for upcoming winter sports and um, other local community content on the MCTV network. And Chris, we were talking before. We like, want to give a shout out to uh, to Frank Altimore, who's uh, he is tuning into our game tonight, Coach. We miss yeah. you up here in the booth. We, you and I did have done games for many years, and uh, you weren't able to do it tonight. So we wanted to give you a shout out. And uh, you know, you're hey, Coach Altimore is an icon. Unique perspective. He's a definition of that. Oh, for sure. I mean, he not only coached at Middle High, he coached at Dow High. Right, he was assistant coach for, at Middle High for a number of years, and he went over to Dow in the mid '80s and had a very successful run there. And Dave, you and I were talking. We think Frank has been to every single Middle and Dow game since 1970, yeah, amazing. except for this one. So, wish you were here, Frank. Third and nine for the Chemex after the timeout. Trips left. Johnson goes in motion. A little bubble screen. To Barry, he's got a lot of room to run. And down to the 10-yard line, a great block by Eli Gordon. And uh, the uh, the screen pass, highly successful. Swing out to Barry, and uh, he had a lot of room in front of him. What well, made that play successful? Well, we made that play successful, not only the, how the quickness of money getting the ball out, but the excellent blocking from Johnson and Gordon, and look at the room he has to run all the way down to the 10 yard line. That's just like that's perfect execution. That on was the bubble screen. Well drawn up play. First and goal from the 10, middle knocking on the door. Another timeout, Metner wants. Well, Money was trying to get the timeout. The flag went down. We'll see if they give him the timeout. They did get they did get the timeout in time. They've used two of them this this drive. But you know what? It's I think Coach Metner is thinking we got a really a chance to almost yeah. seal this game, and, yeah. and uh, we don't want to give up those five yards. It's uh it's worth the timeouts right now. Yeah, you make it a three score game here. It just feels like the game's over, right? I yeah, mean, two scores. You think they got a shot to get back in, but three scores, you're like ah, I, I don't know. Just have not seen enough offensively out of Dow tonight. It's just not been a good offensive night for them. A lot of mistakes, penalties, no sustained drives. Yeah. First and goal from the 10. Off to Johnson, drives ahead down to the two. Just a massive hole, the Red Sea parted. The <laughs> offensive line uh, just blew a wide open hole. He did get tripped up to keep him out of the end zone. Well, this is Johnson going right up the gut here. Excellent blocking. Barry's up there, look at that, throwing a block for him, number 19, oh, and Johnson just... puts his head down and gets all the way down two yard line, which is, if, we're, if the That's a pattern pain. holds true, Money's gonna get the ball and run on the left <laughs> side here. He does, and he <laughs> is close. Just short, just short. To say on the previous, Barry had a pancake block that yeah. would have made Andrew Wiley proud. <laughs> Former Chemic member of the Super Bowl champ, Kansas City Chiefs. Third and goal from the one. Well, why stray from success here? I would think Money again, left side. 
can see it again Let him pick here. his hole. Fake again, the left side, puts his head down just short. It's I mean, really a great play defensively by uh, number two for Dow, uh, Studebaker. Yeah. Johnson. Oh, oh what a stick. That, that was a great one-on-one -on -one tackle. Bring up fourth down. Can Dow convert on the goal line stand Let, Let's here. see who that was. We're trying to get a number on that. It's but right up the gut. Right there. Number 50. 58. Yeah. Let's get him credit. That's Daniel, Daniel Watkins. Watkins. What a play by Watkins. One on one. <laughs> Save the touchdown. Oh, just a perfect tackle textbook. Well, Fourth and goal. I was going to say, if the, we have illegal formation, offense, five-yard penalty, formation. third down. Big penalty. So they're going to it will replay third down instead of uh, bringing up fourth. So. Well, that changes things, doesn't it? does change it? things. Third and goal from this. Got to call it the six because it can't be a five-year penalty from the zero. Pitch right to Johnson. Oh, oh, they had a shot at him in the backfield, and Johnson sheds the tackler and goes in for the score. Touchdown, Chemex. That was. They had a shot at they him. They did. They had a shot at him for a loss here, but Johnson avoided the tackle, cut up field for a six-yard score for middle and high. Making it a three-score game at this point. Seventh touchdown on the season for Johnson. Yep, Chargers ha actually had that sniffed out. They but did. He, he was just able to break a couple of tackles, and once he did that, then it was smooth sailing. Going for two here, Dave. Yep, 19 nothing lead, trying to make up for that blocked extra point. Money back, flag on the play. It's a delay of game. So uh, it'll move it back five yards. Five yard They're penalty. Pass on the play. Two point try. Coach Metner, uh, not yeah. real pleased with that. So they've no. had to burn two timeouts on the play clock, and that time. Uh, and they've had. Uh, so they're still going to go for two. Seems almost certainly to be a pass play now. Money alone in the backfield. Keep your eye on Barry. Money back to pass under heavy pressure. He's got to fire it, but he's not going to be able to un unload it. It was a Studebaker. Studebaker, on the nice play. Big stop. And so, uh, really, the only flaw to the Kemet game tonight has <laughs> been on two of the extra points. Yeah. Uh, but nevertheless, and commanding 19 nothing lead with 12 seconds to go in the third quarter. Dow's got to find a way to flip the field here. They, they need to somehow get a decent kick return and and get a big strike but if they're starting from deep in their own territory every time it's just not a recipe for success. Well this is Johnson getting the ball from money here keep your eye on Johnson takes the pitch cuts up we thought he was tackled right there but he he uh, breaks free of the tackle and runs into the end zone given middle and high and 19 to 0 lead with 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Midland student section uh, full force tonight. Uh, fired up about the Kemic performance, no question about it. You can hear the Kemic fight song over the loudspeaker. Again, Midland the home team tonight, so their fans on the near side. You can see the Kemic cheerleaders and pom pom squad. Enthusiastic as always. The Dow faithful on the far side of the field. And another hold up here. I think the ball might have fall off the, fell yeah. off the tee. Well, Dave, uh, if Midland holds on to this lead and ends up winning the game, this will be a clean sweep for the Kimmicks this week. Yeah. They won the freshman game. They won the JV game last night, a close game, 19-18. And here they are with 19 points and the varsity level so far. Squib kick. And uh-oh, uh some room to run. Here's the big return we were looking for. Finally knocked out of bounds, but it is you know who, Carter <laughs> Coates. Yeah. With a big return. 
We've got an injured Kemick on the field on that return, but uh, there's a line drive kick, uh, not the custom for the Kemicks, and uh, Coach picked it up. Just show those quick feet. He's got to he just he's, explode. He's fun to watch, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I just I like watching him run the football. We just said Dow's going to need a spark to flip the field, and Coach has given it to him. He'll I, get the ball at the 48-yard line. I would like to see what happens if he touched the ball 20 times a game as a tailback. I mean, you would think maybe, well, here it is. Like Dave said, it's more of a line drive kick this time. He goes back to number 22, Coates, and he protects the ball here with both hands, but now he sees running room, puts his shoulder down, and gets the ball up close to the 50-yard line. Got some really nice blocking on that return as well. Carter Thomas was the shaken up Kemick. Um, appears to be okay. Got Came off the field under his own power. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Best field position all game. Just for Just a starting drive, yes. Sure it is for, for Dow. It's a reverse. Looking to pass the ball wide open is Coates, and he just oh. overthrows him. Oh, what a great play call. Pomeranke was the uh, passer on the last play of the third quarter, and uh, boy, he was open. If he just overthrew him, if he could have dropped that in, that would have been six for Dow. Oh, that perfectly drawn up play here for the Chargers. You'll see Bacus give the ball to Palm ranking number four. Oh. Palm Ranky, if that was just like two yards shorter, that would have been perfectly in stride for Coates. But a nice play call. Real nice play call. Hey, Chris, we at MCTV are excited to announce that coming in January, MCTV Network will be streaming on Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and mobile devices. That's big news for the community. Enjoy community events, government meetings, local sports, concerts, and more wherever you are and whenever you want. Stay in, staying informed with what's going on in your community will not be easier. Want to see all the new ways you can share your story through MCTV? Now you can create a TV show, put your videos on YouTube, promote your programs on social media, and even create an audio podcast to reach a whole new audience. To learn more, call MCTV at 837-3474 today. You can find local content on the YouTube channel and podcast by searching MCTV Network's Community Voices. Well, here we go, second and 10 for the Chargers. See what Coach Peterson has up his sleeve. Another little shovel pass, but not much room to run. That was Kronowski taking the shovel pass, and that was uh, sniffed out again by the Chemex. Mahabi in on the stop. Barry in as well. Well, Dave, over the past several years, Dallas had a reputation of being extremely creative on offense, being able to score yeah. off of that creativity. They're being creative tonight, but they can't get anything going. They can't get the big play. They can't get even uh, a, you know, a short gain on some of these plays. That yeah, was a very creative play, just it didn't work. Stuffed at the line. Third and 10. I'm really liking uh, Mahabir out there. He's having a tremendous game for Midland. Another halfback pass, they're going to try it again. Up it for grabs, and it's incomplete. Tremendous coverage by Ty Smith. Pomeranke this time was looking for crits. And uh, this time the Cummings did have that sniffed out. It was really triple coverage. It would have taken a phenomenal effort to complete well, that Well, here one. comes number four, who's going to end up throwing the ball. This Pomeranke gets the ball and really makes a nice toss. Perfect spiral downfield. Number three, Kritz could not pull it in. Of course, he had three Kimmicks around him, but. Yeah, Ty Smith just uh, all over that one, breaking it up. Gordon back to receive the punt for the Kimmicks. Kind of off the side of his foot. And it's going to be down at the 24. Really trying to keep that ball away from the dangerous Eli Gordon. Well, if you're Midland, you want to put together about a six or seven minute drive right yeah. now and 
even if you don't score, who cares? But you eat up time off the clock. Time is running out on Dow, that's for sure. It's a uh, three possession game, as we mentioned. 19 nothing, and uh, it has said it throughout this game. It has been all about the running game for the Chemex tonight. Coach Stoppert and Joe Zwack would be <laughs> proud. I think that's going to be uh, Gor Gordon on the carry. Javier downfield blocking. He's fired up tonight. Yeah, he's he's played a terrific game, both sides of the ball, linebacker and as a blocking back. Gordon gains a yard on the play. Bring up second and nine. Gain of one, second and nine. Yeah, Millen just, yeah, right now, they just want to chew up clock, which they've done the entire game, really. Gordon in motion. Money's going to keep it. Drives up the middle, hauled down. Not a lot of room to run that time. It was well, uh, well defended by Dow. So third and five. Well, again, we've said it before in this half, is that Dow needs to come up with a big third down stop. Get so, the ball back. Right, because here's one. If they stop him now, they would get it back with decent field position, you've exactly. got to believe. And middle has got to kick into the wind. They'd punt into the wind. So here it is on the Charger D again. Come up with a big stop. It's going to be Johnson. No. Yeah. Still on his feet. Johnson. Still going. Still on his feet. Drives ahead down to the two yard line. What a run by Johnson. Drew Johnson having a great game tonight. And uh, boy, it just I think they just felt he was going to get knocked out of bounds and he was having none of it. That is Johnson. There's Johnson right here. He'll be get the ball, go right up the gut here. And this is 100% effort right now. He didn't one, get touched till then. One tackle right there. And then you think he's going to get tackled or forced out of bounds? Nope. Good footwork there. Kept himself in bounds and finally brought down at the two yard line by number 16. Lycos. Lycos. Johnson drives. Touchdown, Chemex. That. Drew Johnson finishes it off with his second touchdown of the game. That, that is a senior playing like a senior, Dave. Yeah, that no really doubt. is. I mean, that's a guy who remembers what happened last year when they got blown out by Dow, and he is saying this is our time for revenge tonight. Yeah. Twenty-five nothing dominant performance by Midland. The lineup for the extra point had add. That was. <laughs> Strange looking was, extra, like nobody was ready. Oh, there's the flag. It's, it's like there had to be something going on with this. The referee in the backfield threw the flag. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering what's happening. The only guys involved in that play were the snapper, the holder, and the kicker. It seems <laughs> it's going to be an illegal shift on. Illegal Midland. shift. Kicking on team, Midland. five yard penalty. Play the try. Coach Metner, really not sure what happened there. Neither are we. But he'll have to try it again. This time, the ball will be placed and held by money at the 15. So they have money as your quarterback, as your holder, and your punter. It just sets up if you ever need, right. like we said before, if you ever need a fake, you're in, it's, you got it in the hands of the guy you want it in. Dead line drive, extra point, no good. Again, heavy pressure on the Charger rush. Nobody blocking Scott. Unusual and to he, see that. His line drive, he pulled it left. Right. This right here is Johnson. What this play is, this is Coach Metner rewarding Johnson yeah. for a great run. He says, I'm going to let you run it into the end zone, and that's exactly what he did. Pure determination by that young man, number 32, has had a great game. Yep. He's had a game that 
you're going to remember for years to come. You do. You know, you know? how we've both seen uh, many of these contests, and yeah, there's performances that come up. Shane Jude last year, just for sure. a memorable performance. And uh, well, money, money's uh, brother, Mark yep. Money, right? Yeah. A couple years ago. And uh, many throughout the the years. Remember, we talked about. Oh, well, this is again an extra point that is five yards further back, and Dow brings heavy pressure, kicks it left of yep. the upright. Second one he's missed tonight, and that's unusual for him. He's usually very consistent booting those extra points. We were talking about uh, Frank. Uh, Altimore, Coach Altimore, and his son Greg Altimore was not a real big guy. He right. just had an amazing game as a receiver in this game. Right. <laughs> One year, it just it always just stood out to me. I mean, so many. Yeah, I go back to the 80s watching this. I remember Steve Money and Brian Leggett and all these great players. I mean, Wiley and Elmer and yeah. <laughs> just throw out names. Alec Marty from a couple years ago, right. quarterback. I mean. So Drew Johnson adding his name to that list tonight. Fielded by Coates, and uh, another nice return by Coates. He has been the uh, shining light in this game for the Chargers, no doubt. He's had some good returns, some big receptions, played well on defense. Well, Dave, we've got 8.56 left in this game. Dow was down 25-0. to zero. And I would think it'd be important for them to just have some success in this last nine minutes of play, right? Well, you know, Chris mentioned they got a shout out last week. Being yeah. shut out now, there is. Don't get if those. They don't win. They'll be four and two. They'll be in the playoffs. You know, yeah. so they got still can make some noise. Yeah. New quarterback throws it up for grabs, and it is now knocked away. <laughs> that was uh, Critz actually playing defense on that. Uh, the Chemex had a shot at the pick, but it was uh, Studebaker with the pass. He's in at quarterback now. Yeah, Coach Peterson's talking to him. He says, you do not throw that ball across the field. He's very fortunate <laughs> Yeah. that uh, Coates was uh, alert enough to bat the ball down. I mean, Studebaker's a fantastic athlete. I, I, my guess is we're going to see him run the ball a little bit here. But uh, obviously, different size athlete than Bacus. Heavy, heavy pressure. Johnson and Mahabir all over Sudebaker. Meet you at the quarterback, yep. teammate. <laughs> Two of the guys, we've called their name a lot. Johnson, of course, and as a running back, and then Mahabir in on the sack Don't forget well. 15, Hunter Kruger. I mean, this is Johnson coming in basically unblocked into the quarterback, and he was unblocked and just tracks him down. Sudebaker had... No chance at that. And no, Mahavir, as you said, Dave, just played a fantastic ball game tonight. And Kruger's right there as well as Fagan. I mean, right now it's time where Midland's just saying, we're coming after you, man. We're attacking. The uh, third and 21. That was going to call timeout. You know, we talked pregame a little bit, Chris. Uh, you know, the Dow's sophomore quarterback said a phenomenal year, Bacus. Yeah. Um, but you said before, I like senior quarterbacks. I and do. Money I is a senior uh, seasoned veteran who's been through the wars, had a tough time last year sure. in this game. You know how bad he wanted it, and uh, he's played like a senior. I, I love seniors in this game. I mean, whether it's Dow or Midland having the senior, especially at that quarterback position, that's just been my – observation and perspective through the years and honestly I remember back when Gary Josiak was faced off against Baltimore and all those great battles and Josiak told me one time the same thing he says man he says Dow has all the sophomores but we got the seniors and they're not going to lose this game he told me that <laughs> and that that's kind of held true held true through the year this is going to have a tremendous career. He's a oh, great player. And a long line of fantastic Dow quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah. And the season's not done. It's not done. You don't get us wrong. Heavy pressure again. Fires it. Oh. Caught. Oh, what a great play. <laughs> what a pitch and catch. 
Pomeranke on the catch. Just threw a post to a Pomeranke right on the money. Studebaker right here in the shotgun. Heavy pressure comes in and throws a dime to Pomeranke. What a beautiful throw. Good coverage, too. Yeah, but, uh, just and Pomeranke. I mean, Pomeranke and Studebaker and, and Coates. I mean, these guys are athletes. Yeah, they just no have not gotten on track tonight, and that's Midlands D. First and he's ten. got room to run. Fires downfield again. No good this time. Oh. He tried to find Coates. I think he well should have ran that ball, Dave. He had all sorts of room along the sideline. Trying to make some big plays, throw it to his playmakers. Uh, just uh, well covered again by Midland. Yeah. No one's within 15 yards of him on that play. And look at, he's going to venture off to his left after he gets a snap here. And he's got all sorts of room to run. No one's near him. And he throws it down into heavy coverage. So we'll see what he does here on second and 10. Four receivers out to the right, one to the left. Heavy, there's a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Offsides on Midland It's going to be the call. Yeah, Chris, you know, I think Coach Peterson looking for a little spark here because, yeah, next week is playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, second down. If it, the playoff picture, everybody – qualifies this year in Everyone? the six game season so the Dow if it holds up coming into this game they would have matched up with Carmen Ainsworth right so it's, it's a, it would be a winnable game for sure and even if it's not them they they'll they'll be in the playoffs with a good chance to make a little run here hey Dave they could face fumble on again. the play ball still loose Mojave broken up on his feet Heading down to the end zone, and the turnover converted. That is Fagan. Fagan picks up the fumble, scoop and score for the Chemex. Mahabir in on that play again <laughs> to force the fumble. Well. That was, that was a mistake that started out the whole play here drop the snap and here comes Mahabir. a bullet in Mahabir <laughs> just shooting to the quarterback fag and scoop and scoop and score but right now I mean Midlands in rushers they're oh, just they smelling blood oh sharks in the water yeah just smelling right, blood this time man. the extra point is true by Haddad 32 nothing Chemex okay just everything going Midlands way but back to your point again I mean these teams are in the same district Right. Right. I mean, they could end up facing each they other could. again this season. And for Dow, I mean, we've talked about it that they got to start feeling good about themselves. Right now, everything is going wrong for them. Uh, they got lots of stuff to clean up. All these mistakes and penalties and execution. And but they, frankly, I would like to see him run the ball more and get the ball to Coates and get the ball to uh, uh, number what. Crits. They got some excellent athletes yeah. for sure, and they, they and could Palm make Rankin. some noise in those playoffs. Yeah. Midland, meanwhile, coming into the game, Chris, the Traverse City Central was ranked one in the dis in District One playoff picture. Midland at number two. Both those teams five and zero. Oh. We'll see how after tonight how things shake out. Mm -hmm. But if uh, if it all held, Midland had possibly could play Heritage, a team they've already defeated this year, and. Uh, um, likely, I believe Midland might be playing Friday night coming up and uh, possibly Dow Saturday. Not, well, I'll just have to wait and see how it all plays out, but that's kind of how the picture is unfolding right now. Coach is going to receive it at the 15-yard line. This time he's met. Dick Dower with the big stick on Coach. Seven minutes to go in the game. Midland in complete control. So, obviously, Midland's going to march on to victory here, 32 to nothing. So, Dave, what would you do if you were a doubt? Would you try to establish a running game, just kind of try to figure out some things running-wise, or are you going to keep chucking the ball around the field? You know, you may just want to try to mix up and yeah, get some positive plays. You I know, would think and, so. Uh, and I, I don't know if it really benefits them to try to throw every time because Midland's just steamrolling in there, yeah. unblocked most of the time. 
you know, this is what you call pinning back your ears yeah. <laughs> and uh, just flat out rushing. Only two defensive linemen. They do run the ball that you recommended. Yeah. And uh, nice little pickup for Lycos on first down. Get a pickup about seven yards on the play. Honestly, I, I would do this like four, five, six more times. Just get, try to get that running game going. Try to get your offense feeling some confidence. Because right now, what's going through their minds? Now they're facing maybe a second straight shutout heading into the playoffs. Javier is going to check out of the game. I think he has an equipment problem. And uh, Dower will check in for him. Hand off again. Going to move the chains. There you Good go. call, Coach. And that's uh, going to be Aiden Wardo on the carry. Got a Dow Charger shaking up on the play. But, yeah, the, I think uh, Coach Peterson is doing exactly what you were thinking is try to at least get some chunk yardage and uh, get Build some confidence. positivity here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you really don't want to look at this film <laughs> this weekend. I mean, there's just so many things that went wrong. But, again, room for improvement, room to coach you up in some areas, but you eliminate those mistakes, eliminate the uh, turnovers, the negative plays, and figure out, I know we're sixth game of the season, but figure out how you can be successful running the football. That's Daniel Kowalczyk, the right guard, shaking up on the play. He's going to be helped off the field. I, boy, you hate to see that. He's having a really good season for Dow, and uh, hopefully it's uh, a uh, minor injury where he can come back and uh, perform in the playoff game next weekend. So for Midland, I mean, let's let's give them a lot of credit tonight because they came out with the perfect game plan. They said, we're going to run the ball until you stop us, and they haven't stopped them all game. And they, they're just, that train is just picking up steam going down the tracks because they're just keep running the ball in the second half, and Johnson's had a huge game uh, from the fullback position. Yeah, just a <laughs> impressive on both sides of the ball. Little shovel pass, a little trickeration, not uh, nowhere to run. Studebaker, Barry on the tackle for Midland. Caught him at the ankles, or Brensky, excuse me, was uh, the the receiver. I think that would be a shovel pass, technically. Yeah, this is just like Dave said, a shovel pass here. Slow developing and no room to run run right into the heart of the Midland defense in the middle of the line. Yeah, they didn't have much of a chance, no. it didn't seem like. It took forever to Yeah, happen. it didn't develop quickly enough, it no. didn't seem like. Second and 10. Johnson on black again. Oh, man, took a hit. Barry in on the stop on uh, uh, Studebaker on the, on the carry. I'll tell you what, I, I don't think Johnson's been blocked in the fourth quarter. He, he's just coming in untouched, un, unblocked. Look at this, coming right. Well, we're not going to see it, but a handful of times he has gotten right back to the quarterback without being hit by a Dow lineman. Third and six. To the Baker, back to pass. Fires in the flat, it's gonna be incomplete. I thought that may have skipped in there. Official all over that, it was a good call. Intended for Jack Erickson, number 25. We'll bring it fourth down, you might as well go for it here. Yeah. Well, don't look now, but Midland's only three points away from a running clock too. Yeah. And you know after last season, they, it was a 42-7 win for Dow that uh, that Midland shocked a lot of us, let's be honest. Yeah, but I mean, Midland <laughs> came into this game frothing at the Oh, ball. for sure. I mean, they were the number one team in the state last year when that happened. Baker fires complete. It's going to be a first down. Johnson on the tackle. But uh, Pomeranke on the 
reception for Dow to move the chains. Put together a little, nice little drive here, mixing up the run and the pass. Let's see what the holdup is here. Officials discussing something. Not sure. Saw anything really controversial here? No. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense. Fifteen yards from the end of the line. So unsportsmanlike conduct on the Chemex. Did not see what happened there. I didn't really see a flag on the play seemed, either. Yeah, it just seemed like a normal play, normal tackle. Must have been something behind the play, maybe. Which Metnern is uh, not happy right now over that development. So uh, now we'll March, probably the deepest they've been all game. Well, how much does this game mean to Middle High? All their starters are still on defense yeah. in the game. And we got 436 left to play. Back to pass. Under pressure again, he just got just swarmed. There's a flag on the play late. Chris Corrigan, number 56, was in on that rush. If it's going to be a hold, it's hard to see a, a face mask really. He was just yeah. engulfed by blue jerseys. Fast. Fast. It is Defense, 15 yard penalty. So two wow. consecutive 15 yard penalties. 30 Same. yards. 30 yeah. yards of uh, penalty gains for uh, Dow. You know, I'm, I'm sure the Chemex would love to have a shutout in this game, but not helping themselves at all. Yeah, 30 straight yards and penalties. And that was one where it just, uh, it was a great pl defensive play. It just must cut, obviously caught the face mask. He's going to keep it. Ooh, nice little run. Finally got hauled down by Fagan, but not after a big pickup for uh, Studebaker. And uh, Chargers in the red zone for the first time tonight. Tell you, it's a straight quarterback run here. Studebaker, number one, gets the ball and goes right up the gut. And he's he's a nice athlete. He's, he's got nice speed and nice movement, and, and uh, gave, gives him a first down here deep into Midland territory. 14, Nick Kruger in the game now on the defensive line for Midland. Back to, he's gonna run it again. He's got a big hole. Gordon tackling him inside the 10 yard line. I'll tell you, if it's you're down, that's... Close. This is what you're talking about, trying to build on something. Yeah, exactly. Teams are competing here. Yeah, Midland wants to keep Dow <laughs> out of the end zone. Dow desperately trying to get on the board and avoid seven, consecutive three. shutouts. And this is nothing, I don't know if we're gonna see a replay on this or not, but the Studebaker's just making plays, getting the ball in yeah. his hands and make plays. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You'll see number two here, Studebaker. So now they're goes right up the gut. mixing it up. We're in the Wildcat formation, it looks like. Studebaker split out to the left. And flag delay of game, I think. Timeout, oh, no, Midland Dow. called timeout. Th or no, Dow calls the yeah. timeout. Yeah, I think the play clock was running down to uh, next to zero, and Coach Peterson got the timeout called. Yeah, and, you know, Dow's capitalized on some two long penalties here against Midland, but... I mean, they're seeing some success with that running yeah. game. And, I mean, you, uh, <laughs> you, it's a little late You now. brought that up, yes. Yeah. But, you know, you what you were saying is, all right, now we've got something to build on going into the playoff game next year we, or next week. We can uh, – we got some other things that we can throw into the mix. Well, I guess my, my take on it, Dave, is I mean, Midland basically said at the beginning of this game, we have no respect for your running game. You're going to have to beat us throwing the ball. And Dow never was able to establish a running game, and they couldn't throw the football. But now you're seeing a different dimension with Studebaker here, 
giving them a different pace to their offense with that quarterback run. All right, so now Studa Baker bobbles the ball. There's a flag on the play. That's probably going to be a hold. They would got enough yardage for the first down, but it is a hold. Wow. Ten yards yeah. from the spot yeah. of the you foul. Things like the bobble. Repeat second down. Receiving yeah. the snap just throws off the tempo of the play. Just little things like that just hurt you. They had Bacus split out wide to the left. Is a got to believe he could be a threat as a receiver too at six five. This is a big penalty for Dow. Oh, just a killer. Well, Coach they, Peterson. They had enough for the first, too. Coach Peterson's going to have a ton of things to talk about for the next week. And number one is you guys can play better than this. This was not even close to your potential. Second and 13 for Dow. Austin Studebaker. I say still run the ball. The Back to pass. Fires to the end zone. Entered. Oh, and knocked away. Almost picked. Boy, hit. Uh, Seraphin had a shot at the interception. He breaks it up. Yeah, I thought he had that for sure. He cut right in front of the receiver, and he's mad at himself. Look at that. He's pounding his. Yeah. Well, Studebaker here. He's th throwing into heavy coverage. And number four, Seraphin should have had the pick. Let's be honest, he should have had that ball right there, goes oh, through his yeah. hands. Oh, boy. And he's mad at himself. He could have had interception in the Midland Dallas <laughs> State Championship game. Third and 13. go. Hemmick's trying to keep the Chargers out of the end zone. Dow trying to get points on the board. Throwing into the end zone and it is a touchdown Chargers. It's Coates. Beautiful pass by Studebaker and uh, to the ever dangerous Carter Coates. Well, this was a great play by Studebaker. I mean, he just put the ball right on the money. And Coates, who we've said all game long, is a fantastic playmaker. Uh, hauled in the pass for a touchdown, getting Dow on that scoreboard. They needed that bad. Oh. The shutout last week and two minutes away from it happening again. Yeah. And, uh, Play clock running down to. Yep, they need a timeout. Penalty. It's just going to be a delay game. I don't think they called timeout. Yep. Five yard penalty. Just a lot of sloppiness tonight from the Chargers, and that's something that shouldn't happen, right? I mean, score a touchdown, everyone should know to come well, in. For especially the extra point. against a team as powerful as the Kamiks. Right. Did not look good. That was a no. low snap. Really, you know, that's going to go as Hetherington's miss, but that wasn't really him. He no. didn't really didn't get a hold. Didn't, he didn't have a chance. No. Well, this is a beautiful pass by Studebaker right here and just delivered it right on the money to Coates, who makes a nice grab adjustment there. Pulling yeah. in the ball. Pass Johnson 32 and Smith two. So nice, and nice play by Dow. Yeah, good pattern run to mm -hmm. step in. Then on the break out is when uh, the ball was delivered. So he, he uh, um, really excellent timing on that play. I'll tell you. I mean, I think Studebaker has done a nice job here at quarterback. Yeah. For Dow. He's given him a different dimension, kind of a different tempo to the offense. Uh, that running ability gives him a uh, a threat and he's, he's made some nice throws including that one right there to Coates for a touchdown. Ohio finally able to ring the bell of the score here. Let's see if they 
Looks like Midland's expecting an onside kick. I guess why not? <laughs> So it was a good drive, heavily aided by some chemic penalties there. Um, so it gives but Dow some life, but it's it still a pretty zone. dominant performance. Oh. By, he's just going to boot it away. Yeah. And uh, into the end zone. So uh, it was uh, Tim Vocal back on the receive to receive that, and uh, kicker just Hetherington just uh, forced the touch back. I would think we'd see some of the reserves coming into the game at this point. Maybe not. Maybe they want to have the seniors on the field for the. They might be in. You end know, of the game. you can't really blame them for that. I remember Frank Altimore told me this years ago. He says, uh, "When you lose this game as a coach, you really don't sleep well for a whole year." <laughs> <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> A lot of people care about this game. Yeah, a lot. It'll be a sweep to Eli Gordon. Finding the edge, he's going to be run out of bounds after about a 12-yard, maybe 13-yard pickup. First down, looking high. And so now they're going to bring in uh, the second unit. Maybe they wanted to have them run a play so the crowd can give them the yeah. ovation that they deserve. Because sure. just an unbelievable game by that offensive line. And uh, block, just, it was just great blocking all the way around. The and execution and play calling was A-plus tonight. And Johnson, in my opinion, game ball, he was the star of the show. He, he had a fantastic going to be illegal substitution. Midland Blake. had 12 uh, yep. no, he had 12 men in the huddle. And so the player just ran off, but not oh, not allowed to do that. So who is the backup quarterback so Sam for Midland? Dower <laughs> is uh, number 21, I believe, will be in at quarterback. Yep. He's getting the uh, instructions from Coach Metner anyway. is who it is at quarterback, Dower. He's going to keep it. Nice pickup, about four or five yards. Sam Dower. Wardell in the, the stop. Well, for us, I mean, we, we've talked about last year's game when Dow won big, and yeah, Dow was impressive in that game, but Midland's been equally oh, <laughs> impressive no, no in question this game. About this, it. Was, this was this was payback. Yeah, I mean, that, this <laughs> is just payback for what happened last year. And uh, Midland High is, you know, we should mention too, uh, highly ranked in the state of Michigan yep. again this year. They're going to be six and they're going to be division champs, city champs, right? League champs. Yeah, tremendous season for the Chemics in this yeah. abbreviated COVID COVID year. Right. We had six game regular season, so every game there was a sense of urgency. And, right. and Midland has been playing fantastic ball from the start. I mean, anytime you're averaging 46 points a game and only allowing nine, you are uh, you have your A game. Yep. Tim Vocal on that last carry for the Chemics. Kyle Ligum split out to the right. seconds to go. It's probably going to be the last play of the game. And that will be Dower on the keeper. And the clock's going to run down here. Dominant Chemic performance tonight. Midland will end the year at 6-0. and oh. Conf Like you said, conference champions, congratulations Chemics. City champions, congratulations Chemics. And uh, and probably a top seed in the well, playoffs. Well, we'll see what, what happens. They're currently number two. Probably depend on how the playoff points work out with Midland's victory over Dow and however it turns out for Traverse City Central tonight. But they'll be number one or two 
uh, certainly. Undefeated season for the Chemex. The strange year where kind of the thin <laughs> crowd tonight is, you know, and just the, the year that we're in. First three games of the season were canceled and uh, fortunately able to resume the season. And uh, Midland will head into the playoffs at 6 0. Dow also heading to the playoffs. And we'll see where uh, who they end up with, but four and two record. Four and two, yeah. Nothing to sneeze at. No. And uh, yeah, but for for Dow, I mean, you, you got some issues to fix heading in the playoffs for sure. I mean, they were exposed the last two weeks, particularly on offense, and they've got to solve some problems uh, before the playoffs start next week. Not a lot of flaws to the Chemex game tonight. No, this was old school. I mean, we talked about Joswiak and Stoppard and, <laughs> you know, the glory coaches of years past and how they would run the ball. And that's a middle high. They said early, we are going to run the ball until you stop us. And Dow really never stopped them. I mean, that was just a dominant offensive performance by the Chemex in terms of uh, ru running the ball. And, of course, Johnson just had a fantastic game tonight in the fullback position. And Money orchestrated everything well for, as a quarterback. And the linemen played well. Just execution was superb for the Kinnicks. So we're going to take a look at some of the highlights tonight, Chris. And uh, this, this looks like Midland's go-to play, really, Dave, around the end zone or around the goal line is get the ball to Money and that let him... Take it in from the left side, and the blocking was just superb. Yep. And money goes in. I think we're going to see the simple play right here. Yep. And he's got three blockers ahead of him, and he just puts his head down and barrels into the end zone. And Two rushing touchdowns for the senior money tonight. Now think about money here. He's he started as a sophomore. <laughs> I think we're seeing yeah. the same play here. <laughs> it was but a good play for sure. I think this was his fourth Midland Dow football game. Two in the playoffs and oh, could be. Don't don't quote me on that, but I he's he's been in a few of these, that's for sure. So yeah, and uh, Midland with the dominating performance with zero yards passing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. When 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 was the last time you'd say Middle High had zero? It, well, is it official <laughs> or is that? I don't, they didn't complete a pass, I don't think. I, th I thought they might have snuck in one there, but maybe I'm wrong. But uh, So a jubilant uh, Chemic team down on the field, and we'd just like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight and uh, on the coverage, live coverage on, on YouTube and here on MCTV. Chris, you know, the MC, the, all these guys that, are, that bring this on, we just get to get up here and talk about the game. But right. Uh, Matt and the crew do all the work and uh, with all this tremendous camera work and, and it's just a blessing to our community to be able to have uh, MCTV here bringing um, all these great events for sure into your uh, living rooms. So 51st version of the city championship game. Yep. When was your first game? When when's the first time you saw a Midland Dow City geez, Championship? Game? I was pretty young. It was that was a big deal in my house. The uh -huh. Midland Dow game. <laughs> my dad was the former AD and football and a football coach at Midland for a long time, and uh, starting in I think in '77 maybe. Wow. Uh, but so I go way back. But it was very intense week in our house. Yeah. <laughs> the Midland Dow. No, I mean. Dow game. So, well, good luck to both the Midland and Dow in the playoffs next uh, weekend, and congratulations to our city champion, the Midland Chemex, Victor tonight, 32-6. to six. Again, this is Dave Marsh, along with Chris Stevens, bringing you the action. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs>